What's going on everybody, my name is Tatro and today I wanna to show you a lo-fi trick that you can apply to any of your tracks that doesn't require a plugin and can be done in basically any DAW or audio editor that has time stretching. Lo-fi beats, lo-fi hip hop, lo-fi is definitely a genre that's been growing. It was huge last year and it's only gonna get bigger this year. So if you're one of those people who just recently got inspired and you're just getting into music production or beat making, you should check out Skillshare, the sponsor for today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. There's so much to explore with real projects to work on and a creative community to work with and encourage you. It empowers you to accomplish real growth. One of the best parts about Skillshare is it's designed around real life. You can access the classes when you need to and you can find shorter classes that fit into your routine. One of the ways I grew my audience is by using Instagram, a visual platform. And if you want to learn to take visually stunning images of your setup of your craft, music production, you should check out Brandon Wolfel's class on Instagram photography. He's actually one of the Instagram photographers that inspired my style. He worked with a lot of neon lights and a lot of the gear that we use has a lot of bright, cool neon lights. Super eye-catching and a super easy way to get people interested in you and your music. Skillshare is super affordable at under $10 a month. So today you can click the link in my description and get two free months of premium membership for Skillshare. It's definitely worth it to explore your creativity for two months and see if Skillshare is right for you. But for now, let's get back into the tutorial. All right, so like I was saying, this process is super simple and can be done in any DAW or audio editing software as long as you can time stretch. It doesn't require any plugins. All we need is the audio of your track. I'm gonna be doing this with a full mixed down track today, but we'll talk about a little later how you can apply this to individual layers of a track. Here's that chill beat. It sounds pretty normal right now. It sounds normal quality. And for comparison purposes, I'm gonna duplicate this track right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and solo this second one. It's identical. And I'm gonna click on this clip and down here near the warping, sometimes when you drop audio into Ableton, it'll automatically warp it. So make sure it didn't do that, first of all. Second of all, let's warp it ourselves but it's just got a single warp marker at the beginning. That's why it's important that we do it ourselves. Ableton didn't try to do anything fancy. And we're gonna to try to change warp modes here and we wanna do repitch. Now what repitch is, repitch is your typical time stretching where if the audio is faster or shrunk down to be shorter, it will play back at a higher pitch. And a faster tempo. Obviously that takes us out of our original idea, but it's crucial for what we're about to do. So the reason I kept the original track here is just so we can compare how much we're stretching this. And I'm stretching it by changing the segment BPM number. So I'm gonna shrink this track down pretty significantly and I'm gonna just lower this number until I get to about 50% of the original length, maybe a little bit less. And then I'm gonna go ahead and freeze the track and flatten it. Now this makes it so the track is just permanently at that pitch. Some intense like drum and bass anime beat there or something, but we want to put it back to the same length it was using repitch again. So I want to change my warp mode here back to repitch because we just flattened it and Ableton defaults to the beats warping mode. And instead of bringing the number down, I'm now gonna stretch this audio back out. So what you hear now is a slightly reduced quality version of the track that gives it a lo-fi vibe. This is the lo-fi version. This is the normal version. You can hear this is much brighter. You got a lot of the high end, the pitch is a lot more steady. Switch back. Yeah. 
it just has that grit to it now because we're stretching it out. Now let's do this to one more degree. So I just duplicated the original one. So this sounds plain clean as it always did. And let's do the same thing to it, but let's shrink it even more and then we'll have to stretch it out even more. Yes, we'll warp it. We'll go ahead and go into repitch mode and we'll shrink it way down. So now we're at about, I don't know, what is that, like a sixth of this? Uh, let's go ahead and flatten this version. We'll freeze and then flatten. Boom. Put it back into repitch mode again. And let's stretch it back out so it is the original length. Just going to try to line up these transients as best I can. All right, we're back to the original length. And we just had to stretch that out a lot more. So let's hear how it sounds. Now this is a lot more lo-fi, a lot more like you're hearing it through a phone almost, compare it to the original. Super lo-fi version. Slightly less lo-fi version. So you can hear what a difference you can get at different degrees of having to stretch this audio. One more thing I want to talk about really quick is that, let's say we didn't feel like preserving the original timing of the track. That's also a cool way to give it more of a lo-fi sound. So if we actually made, I'm gonna use for example, the one that is not so lo-fi. Call it medium-fi. Instead of making it be the same length, I'm gonna go ahead and stretch it out a little longer. So have it actually be longer than the original track, which will make my tempo a little slower, but let's see how the vibe is. But the overall vibe is different because the track is slightly slower, which makes it degrade a little bit more and you know just changes the feel. So you can experiment with that. You can experiment with not keeping it the same tempo, making it longer, making it shorter, the degree to which you stretch it. So shrinking something super small and then stretching it a lot or shrinking something not as extreme and then you don't have to stretch it so much. The other thing you could potentially do is take individual tracks of your song, like maybe say just the drum track and resample your drums and do this to just the drums. So they'll still line up with your track, they'll still fit into your grid, but they'll have more of a lo-fi sound without the whole track having a lo-fi sound. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that tip. Let me know if you're gonna use it to make your track sound a little more lo-fi. And if you're doing this in a DAW other than Ableton or any kind of audio editor, let me know in the comments how you're actually able to stretch the time and if it's as easy as it is here. If you haven't yet, click that subscribe button down below for more live electronic music performances, tutorials, and content to make you a more productive producer. Take advantage of the two free months of Skillshare that are in the description. And thank you so much for watching. This has been Tatro. Have a good one.